what I call the AIDS murder mystery is an interesting story, both because of the public interest in the issue and as, an, as a story of how scientific evidence is gathered and evaluated to come to a final judgment. It is the story of the origin of AIDS. The story begins with the allegation that AIDS was introduced to Africa by a Western scientist. We don't believe this is true, but what you need to know is that the disease is related to diseases carried by primates. And it has a very high mutation rate, which is one of the reasons why it's so dangerous. Most viruses are made of DNA, and so they make DNA, which makes messenger RNA, which makes protein. The thing is, the DNA um, replication is uh, very ancient in history and very accurate, whereas uh, AIDS is a retrovirus it actually travels as RNA, which then makes DNA, which makes messenger RNA and protein, and to replicate uh, the RNA makes DNA, which makes RNA. This replication is much less accurate, and therefore it mutates much more. So the questions are, why did it appear now, uh, and uh, what will happen, and is it similar to anything that we can understand? You also need to know that the story relates to polio. Polio is a conventional virus in which you, to which you can make antibodies. And so in the 1950s, three groups were trying to make vaccines to it. But they couldn't, they couldn't manage to do so until John Enders showed that you could grow the virus in the kidney cells from a green monkey. Before that, the only way you could study a, a polio was to infect a monkey and work with it before it died. Once Enders developed the culturing method, three laboratories started to race to develop the vaccine, the Sabin, Salk, uh, and Kaprowski. Ultimately, the government decided to fund the Sabin and Salk types of vaccines. We currently use the Sabin type of vaccine, and Kaprowski's was not used in the United States. However, he had connections with the United Nations, and the Kaprowski vaccine was tested uh, in uh, the Belgian Congo and in other places such as Holland and Poland. The hypothesis first brought forth by Edward Hooper and then promulgated in the United States were that Kaprowski's green monkey cells were contaminated with a monkey virus that became the HIV virus. This was injected into the Congolese children inadvertently when they were vaccinated against polio. AIDS developed, but the Congo broke into civil war at that point and uh, communications were considerably disrupted. And so, according to the Hooper hypothesis, uh, that years later, when peace returned, the first cases of AIDS were recognized. And the argument would then be that, the, that AIDS was created by an inadvertent uh, carrying of the virus with the polio virus. This is a very disconcerting conclusion. And we have to ask, how could you test the idea and verify whether or not it is true? So that's where we look at the mechanisms for scientific investigation. Science is all about hypotheses, which are predictions of mechanisms that can explain certain phenomena. So one way to address a hypothesis is to come up with an alternative hypothesis and test the two against the evidence. In this case, the alternative hypothesis is that uh, AIDS could have jumped from humans many times, uh, but communications prevented it. In this case, we know that uh, humans in Africa interact with monkeys quite a bit, uh, either keeping them as pets or eating them. And the argument is that occasionally AIDS jumped from apes to humans, but these people got sick in villages, were quickly shunned, and died without con uh, without continuing it. After uh, the co uh, colonial era, uh, roads were built, and the men went into the cities to find work. What we do know that happens 
is that when men go into cities to find work and then return to their villages, they frequently pick up sexually transmitted diseases and return them to the villages. And you now create a reservoir large enough uh, to uh, establish and sustain the infection. And so the disease got started in Western Africa and then was carried by American tourists from Western Africa to Haiti and then back to the United States. Now that you have two hypotheses, you have a means of, of looking for evidence to analyze those two hypotheses. The first point was that uh, the green monkey virus uh, didn't really look like the human AIDS virus, and so there was always a bit of a question about that. But we now uh, can get the complete genetic analysis of the green monkey virus and other viruses, and it turns out that from the DNA sequences, or the RNA sequences as you wish, uh, the, it turns out that the human virus is much more closely related to uh, the viruses of chimpanzees and mangabe monkeys, not green monkeys at all. We would interpret this finding to say that the virus came from chimpanzees and mangabees, which were not the source of the polio virus vaccine, uh, which again was cultured in the uh, cells of the kidney cells of green monkeys. There were lots, also lots of other reasons to doubt the original argument, um, which includes that there were there were an awful lot of assumptions uh, in the argument, and the more assumptions you make, the less probable it becomes. And also, uh, there was absolutely no sign of AIDS developing in any of the other Salk or Sabin vaccines, which would say that the Kaprowski vaccine was the only one contaminated. And plus the fact, the idea that AIDS would not have been noticed even during civil war seemed to be a bit far-fetched. Therefore, the alternative hypothesis has to be considered. Relationships of DNA sequences can be diagrammed in many ways. In this diagram, the uh, central branch point is the origin of the putative ancestor of all the uh, human and ape uh, vir virus forms. The red group on the left is the in the, uh, includes the family that includes the chimpanzee uh, virus and the most common of the human uh, HIV viruses. And so one can see that it is closely related to the chimpanzee group uh, rather than, uh, than the green monkey. The green monkey virus is indicated in the blue uh, uh, group to the and to the right, but the HIV-2, uh, the human uh, virus-2, is closely related to the Mangabe group seen in the uh, in the lower uh, uh, in the lower graph. So the relationships indicate that the viruses are much more closely related to the Mangabe and to the chimpanzee viruses than to the green monkey virus. Thus, the evidence was already very strong against the Hooper uh, uh, hypothesis, but finally, samples of the original Kaprowski vaccines were located, since primary data are sacred to scientists, and they were found to be free of the virus. Therefore, the conclusion is that the Hooper hypothesis is extremely poorly supported, and the alternative hypothesis that AIDS could have jumped many times, but uh, it was the improved communications that allowed it to get become established, is the currently reigning hypothesis. Like any hypothesis, this too could be proved wrong at some point, but the evidence supports the alternative hypothesis far more. This and other adventures can be found in The Joy of Science by Richard A. Lockshan, published by Springer.